Hi, if you like the video, please remember to subscribe. Robloveveggie.com and tonight or this morning or today, depending on when you're watching this video, I'm just going to be talking about the process I went through um, over the last few weeks picking my top 10 photos. Now, the reason why I kind of went through this process was because Ivan Eric Perello from the Candid Frame, Candid Frame Photography podcast put a call out for um, um, kind of listener profiles over on, on, on his website. Um, the, um, let's have a look. The uh, Candid Frame um, Photography podcast website. Um, and if you haven't watched it already or listened to it already, the Candid Frame Photography podcast is probably one of the um, best photography podcasts on the internet. Definitely, uh, Ivan Eric spends a lot of time interviewing some really fantastic artists and photographers. And you can't go wrong listening to it. It really is uh, a great piece of work. And if you're into your photography, very, very inspirational indeed. Um, so what, what he did was he put a call out for um, for anybody who fancied having their photos featured on the uh, on the blog um, and also answering some questions. And in order to do this, what you had to do was go through your photos and submit ten of your best photos and answer some questions. And then, but then you start to think as well. You start to think, well, okay, <laughs> ten photos. You know. I mean, I've personally sort of been shooting kind of semi-seriously since 2007. I mean, I'm an amateur photographer, and I do, do this in my part-time, but in 2007 was when I really um, sort of, I, I got my Fujifilm S5700 bridge camera and started going out and taking photos just, you know, as a, as a hobby. And one of the things I've done right from the beginning with that is I've always uh, uploaded what I consider my best shots to um, to, to the Flickr um, photo uh, sharing site. Um, so you know, over on Flickr at the moment, as of November 2007, I've got approximately well, I've got exactly um, well, it says 7,200 photos, but there isn't actually. I've publicly shared 2,400 photos, and what you can kind of see here is, you know, this is my public Flickr. Um, photo stream, um, and so you know, I would I would say that you know this group of photos is you know, is the pool um, from which I would uh, be pulling um, uh, pulling me this 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 top ten of, uh, of photos. But you know, so I was starting off with um, two thousand four hundred photos, and then I've, then I've got to kind of pick my top ten. But luckily, um, what I've been doing. Um, since 2007, is so I've kind of been I'm going on a photo book and take lots of photographs and then edit it, edit them at home on my computer, and then what I consider the best ones from that particular session, I would then upload to Flickr. But also pretty early on, what I discovered was the kind of when you do go on a photo book, when you do edit some photos, you do upload them to Flickr. The reason why you think they're good. Um, could be because you're emotionally attached to the photos, because you know you've gone to the effort of going out and taking them. Um, and with time, um, those photos you might think actually they're not that particularly great, or they're not as good as you thought they would be. But rather than delete them from my photo stream, um, because uh, as well as thinking photos maybe aren't as good as you once thought they were, sometimes you also think the other way. There might be other ones that, that you've grown fond of. I'd left them on my Flickr photo stream and just created another set. Um, and this set was called, uh, what was it called? It's called Scale Speeders or, um, oop, let's um, close that down. Um, this set was called uh, Scale Speeders um, uh, Slideshow. And so let's have a look. So if we're going to Flickr and we're going to my sets, what you should see in a second is Rob Nunn's Scale Speeder slideshow. And this has got 506 photos in. We just left that hopefully just load up, which you can in a sec. And what I was doing is, as I was, you know, probably, you know, a few weeks or a few months after I'd loaded up a particular set of photographs to Flickr, I would then go through, and from those photos, I would add my favourites of those 
into this this extra set. So it's like an extra filter for um for, for my images. Um, and um, so that's kind of another filter for, for filtering down the photos. But you know, there's still 500 photographs in this particular way of doing it. Um, so the other thing I did as well was, I think it was either the beginning of this year or the end of last year, I kind of decided that I had all this work um, on Flickr, but I didn't really have anything. It was, it was very difficult. If you wanted to say, if you wanted to say look, someone would say, well, show me your photographs, Rob. Where can I go? I'd say, we could go to Flickr. You could look at my whole public photo stream. Or you could um, look at the slideshow, and that would give you sort of my better ones. But I was very conscious of the fact that even within that slideshow of images that I thought were better ones, there was probably quite a few that weren't particularly good. So I spent the time to go through and create a couple of um, uh, portfolios, uh, PDF um, portfolios. Ooh, I thought it was the wrong one. <laughs> You have to bear with this because this is the first time I've done a Google uh, Hangout on there. And uh, what basically normally with my videos, I record them um, on a camera separately and then upload them. What I'm trying to do here is record it via the webcam on my new laptop. And they're all uploading um, to YouTube and to Google Plus straight away. So everything's been done live, and I'm not that familiar with the, the software. So what I'm trying to do is just flip back to. Oh, right there, no, don't do that. Just flipping back and forth at the moment. What are you doing? There we go. So we're back on. So if we go and have a look at the robnonphoto.com website, and then if you go to the gallery, there's online versions of my portfolio. So let's go to uh, portfolio two, portfolio one, sorry. And what you can see here is a collection of photos um, grouped in terms of uh, just just dates from 2000 and 2009. So I did one from 2007 to 2009, and what I consider were my best photos from that scale speed of slideshow on Flickr. And I created this gallery on robnonphoto.com, and I also created a couple of PDF portfolios as well, which you can download on robnonphoto.com. One for 2007 to 2009, and one from 2009 to 2000 and uh, 2012. Um, and that gave me a base of, I think, let me consult my notes. It gave me a a base of about 60 photos from which to you know start choosing my my top 10 as well so what I then did and this is the real power of Flickr as well is I then created another another set on Flickr called my top 10 photographs and I went through my, my slideshow photographs and the, you know the, um, the ones from the PDF portfolios and started adding them to a um, and in them to that set. Now I didn't just add ten; I added lots and lots. So I probably added, I think, probably close to thirty photographs to that to that to that group. And then I looked at that group um, in isolation, and then just started knocking photographs off. You know, going through, get rid of anything that was too similar. Like I've got some insect photos or ones that were, were, were pr practically the same. Get rid of them. Any that I suddenly thought actually I don't particularly. I think that photograph's that, that good anymore. And I have to admit, it was really, really difficult as well because to try and get all, you know, from 2007, you know, it took me six years worth of ships shooting, two, two and a half thousand photos um, that I thought, you know, were good to start off with and whittling down that to 500 in the slideshow and then through the PDF portfolios. There were some photos that definitely aren't in that top 10 that I think, that, that I think, think were good. But, you know, this whole process is, is you know, Often we were all very guilty of uploading too many photos, perhaps to photo sharing sites, and not and not being cruel enough to ourselves or honest enough, um, honest enough to ourselves, and only uploading you know the very best. Because one of the simplest ways you can become a better photographer is just by sharing um, only your very very best work. That, way. but anyway, so I kind of come down to my um, got down to my top ten, and then. Um, 
I sent that to uh, Iber Berenix, um and with the answer, and I think he then sent me the questionnaire. So if you go to um, the uh, the Candid Frame podcast uh, website, if you just search for the Candid Frame, you can go through the website, you can go through the blog, and, and scroll through, and you'll, you'll find my kind of interview um, with my photographs on there. But the whole process I found really enlightening. It sort of taught me quite a lot about the style of photographs that I like to take and like to share. But also how powerful free photo editing software uh, can be in terms of organizing yourself. So like, like with the likes of Flickr. And, and Flickr is free now. And you can upload up to two gigabytes of uh, photographs, which, which is tens of thousands of photographs. And then you can use the structure of using sets and, uh, and groups to, to, to really filter out your photos, to really come up with, you know, to, to percolate, if you like, the best of the best, but at the same time still keep all your other photographs um, as well um, to come up with, you know, you know, the, the definite best ones that you'd want to share you know, with the world and, and, and uh, public as well. So I thought it might be quite helpful to sort of share that process I went through there so that if you may be struggling at the moment thinking, you know, well, how do I organise my photographs? Um, you may well do it on your computer at home. I mean, I, I do as well. I use uh, Google's Picasso, and then you can rate them with stars and things like that. But I found that if you have to physically upload them and choose your better ones from there, that kind of gives you one layer of filtration. And then if you leave it for a bit and then, then shoot, look at those photographs and choose another, you know, lot of favourites, then that's, a, that, that's uh, another layer that, that will make those photos better, if you like. And then if you have a final kind of layer, where you're deciding on a strict number of photographs, you say, look, this is my top 20 photographs at all time. Um, that really helps, and you can really define what your photography is all about and what your, uh, what your best uh, photos are. So many thanks to Iberonex for uh, making this process available because I've, I found it really helpful. I'd recommend anybody uh, to do the same thing as well. So what I th- thought I would do next is actually have a look at my top 10 photographs and sort of maybe to talk about them uh, just a little bit, don't worry, it's not going to go on too long. And you can um, maybe, uh, you can always give me a little bit of feedback in the, in the comments at the bottom of the YouTube post, or this will appear on rodmanphoto.com, so in the, uh, in the comments at the bottom of there. So let's turn on the screen share again and see if I can get it to do it right. I guess we click on this one. Let's go back to Flickr. Now, hopefully, if we now go back to my top ten, we click on that one there, and we can start with. If we go, there we go. That will do. Hopefully, you can you can see that. Maybe not brilliantly in high definition, but that this was a nice sunset photo I took down at Leon Solent not that long ago. Um, and what was different about this one was the colours of the sunset were, were really spectacular. Um, the sun was probably dri- dipped down the horizon about 10 minutes after this, uh, sorry, before this photo was taken. And I used my 55 to 250 Canon uh, lens to really zoom in on, on the horizon. And although it looks like there's lots of post processing with the colours going on, I think all I really did was just increase the contrast and the saturation just a tad to bring up this. And I really like the way that the, the pink glow. Is, um, is right behind that tree, and uh, it's probably the best. Well, hopefully, I think it's the best sunset shot um, I've ever taken. This next one of this archway was taken in Fareham, um, in Hampshire, in the UK, and I just like the way the fact that we have the structure of the uh, railway bridge with the tree, and then we have the cyclists. Then, if you look into the distance, there's quite a few little things going on in the background. There's a creek with some boats, and there's also there's like a, uh, a an old house, um, an old. It, it looks like an old country house in, in the distance. I think it was, it was one that was rebuilt. Um, it's classic black and white. It's the intersection of the geometry of the building with the person riding back. That um, I really like about, really like about that one. This one is a similar sort of shot. This was taken again down at Leon Solent, a little bit further up. I think maybe nearer, sort of a little bit further to the west. Um, I like this again. We've got. Quite a, it's a bit of a bleak scene, but it's telling a story. We've got um, some nice leading lines there. We've got a pushchair on on the side, and then the family um, by the beach, and they're all wrapped up really warm. It's obviously 
a really cool day. And I, I do you know, I just kind of like the idea of, uh, of the story that that particular photograph um, tells. Um, this one is, is, is in Fairham. This one's in the graveyard there. And it was probably one of the first photos that I took with my SRT 101 with some self-rolled film. I, I got this uh, bulk loader from the car boot sale with a load of film on it. And at the time, I didn't realize it was fogged, and uh, I managed to scratch it with the bulk loader. But the first roll I made up, I then took put in my Minolta SRT 101 film camera, 35mm, with the 50mm 1.4 lens on it, and uh, took this a, a whole series of photos, and they were very fogged. And, um, and scratch, but I don't know, I really like the look of this one. There's really small depth of field on it. It looks very dreamy, it looks very ghosty as well, which kind of helps with the fact that it is a uh, picture of a, of a grave. <laughs> this next one was taken with my HTC Desire camera. I think I was on a course with Jessops and we were in, this, in the top of the shopping centre and I just wandered off on one of the breaks and there was all these old Father Christmas mannequins and I thought he looked quite eerie, sort of there with his with the back half of his head missing, like snap on. It's kind of an example of a time where you know the best camera you have is the one that's with you. And I uh, applied a cross processing uh, filter to that. And I just I just really like the eeriness and the, the nastiness of that particular photo. This one was taken in the Isle of Wight at the Dinosaur Museum. And again, I like the intersection of the fact that we've got this dinosaur. <laughs> Sort of looks like some sort of velociraptor, and then you've got this guy's head who's kind of looking straight into the camera, um, and it's quite humorous, I think. And you know, I really like that one. Um, uh, probably my best macro flower shot. I do a lot of macro photography with flowers. Um, normally, when I buy some for Suzanne, um, <laughs> I'll creep down later at night with macro lenses. And this one was taken with a lens baby as well, so we've got this lovely soft dreaminess. With the small depth of field, but the focus is bang on the center of the rose, and the rose is a gorgeous, gorgeous yellow color. Um, I'm actually looking at it now, I may have oversaturated the yellows to be honest, and they've, they've gone to white, but you know, I can always go back and change that in, in editing. But you know, one of my uh, more favorite photos there. Really like that one. Uh, this next one is uh, my homage to Henri Cartier Bresson, the famous street photographer. Um, We've got the workmen obviously on a break in, in their work gears, and these big burly workmen are looking down what is below them in the moat at Port Bruckest. There's a swan and her signet. So I just like, you know, the, we've got the diagonal line coming across the bridge, we've got the reflections of the water, and we've got the contrasts of the, of the tones in the photo, but also the fact we've got these burly builders looking down at these uh, rather delicate animal, animals. Like that indeed, and then another. This is an, probably my best insect shot ever that I've ever captured an action shot of a bee that was caught in a spider's web. And I was lucky enough to take this with my S5700, my old Fuji bridge camera, with the flash on as this spider tried to take on this bee as the bee was vigorously trying to escape. And I'm happy to say that the bee did escape and did, did fly off, but um, yeah, I just uh, the focus is tacked sharp. Um, again, it's really telling a story, and uh, yeah, I, I really like it, and um, I hope, hope you do too. Uh, what have we got next? And the final picture, it's probably a bit, bit bland and a bit boring, really, but it, it's a picture of a building down by Pretty's Hard near the Explosion Museum, and it's kind of the architectural picture that is most like the, the ones I do, so it's black and white. Um, it's very uh, straight lines, very geometric, very symmetrical. Um, we've got a dark sky, which I quite like doing, where you take the blue sky and dark it using a digital filter. Um, and again, it's just that shape, that rectangle with the, with the textures being highlighted with the light. And uh, yeah, it's something that you'll find if you look in my Flickr photo stream, lots of photos that, that are quite, um, quite, similar, quite similar to that. So there we have it. That's um, kind of. Well, I hope this uh, screencast hasn't been on too long, but it's, we've looked at my top ten photos that I collated for the uh, Candid Brain Photography podcast and how I went about doing it. And maybe um, if you fancy doing something 
similar and it will really help you look at your photography and kind of focus you focus you in on what your style might be and the type of photographs you, you really like taking because it's not always that apparent when you take hundreds or thousands of photographs all the time and upload lots as well it really is worth time to pick out your favorites and, uh, and uh, and share them in a way. I mean, it's on the candid frame was one way, but maybe creating a PDF portfolio or just a set of like or uploading them to Facebook or 500px so people can see what you consider to be your best work. Well, my name's Rob from RobMomPhoto.com. Remember, go over to RobMomPhoto.com or the YouTube channel, or you can find me on Flickr, and uh, you can email me scalespeeder at gmail.com if you've got any questions or comments. And um, thanks for watching.